Hi everyone, it's me, and today, Pokemon. Let's learn about the truth behind the proportion collapse in Pokemon, together. Pokemon! Ta-da! Oh, Congratulations! What? You are killing Pokemon! What? In the established canon of the Pokemon series, we, our player character at least, you and us are the reason that at least 25 Pokemon species have gone extinct. That's not even really a theory. It is established within the canon. To be fair, it's buried way down in there and requires you to connect a few dots, but I have 100% confidence that Game Freak has expressly put this in here for observant, dedicated players. And perhaps strangest of all, this steamrolling of the wildlife, us bumping innocent animals permanently off the mortal coil, it's all because of a message from God. The Pokemon God, God Arceus. He gives us this divine mission to exterminate the Mon. If you thought Pokemon lore was weird before, <laughs> sweet until you hear this one. You start off the video with such a dark, dark tone. What? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! The Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Hi. Gosh, it's dark. The only show that's nerdy enough to remind you that Ho Oh isn't just a Pokemon, it's H -O -H -O. Also, the chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide. Drop that knowledge bomb the next time you're in Mrs. Nagy's third period chemistry class. La <laughs> chemistry lessons. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there are three things that are certain in this world. Death, taxes, and new Pokemon games. We just had a Pokemon Presents last week. We're rapidly approaching the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Even Pokemon Go is making itself a bit of a resurgence. In short, oh. Pokemania is in the air. So I figured it was time we took another look at the series. And what better game to talk about than the smash hit of 2022, Pokemon Legends Arceus. While recent remakes have literally just been recycling the Pokemon formula that's been reused since the mid-90s, Legends Arceus threw that formula out into the trubbish. It's the first game in the core series to give players an open world to explore. But while it certainly was a new look, it wasn't a new world. In this game, you're actually running through an ancient version of Sinnoh, the region from Gen 4's Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. How but they don't call it Sinnoh, they call it in another name. Far back in the past are we talking? Unfortunately, the game doesn't explicitly tell us, but based on the somewhat modern amenities of Jubilife Village, like binded books, brimmed hats, and steam-powered Pokeballs, as well as the architectural inspiration for the Galaxy Hall, the game seems to take place in the Meiji era of Japanese history, which took place from around 1868 to 1912. And yeah, a few hundred years ago. The houses and clothing in Jubilife Village seem to resemble that of the Edo era, the era prior to Meiji, more likely to be closer to that 140 years ago mark. So really, this thing was one part Pokemon game and one part history lesson for that fictional region. And while it's yeah. certainly fun picking up on all- History lessons. All the similarities from two games set in the same region from two different time periods, like map locations, logo artwork, and ancestral connections between NPCs, what really tickled my theorist senses were the differences between the two regions that seem to have happened in that 140 year gap. There are some obvious ones, like the region's name being changed from Hisui to Sinnoh, and isolated camps evolving into urbanized cities, but clearly I'm not here to talk about my love of geography or urban planning. I'm here to talk about the biggest difference of them all, the Pokemon. There are- I love urban planning. Yeah. A good number of Pokemon that we find in the Hisui region that are completely new. Ones that don't make an appearance in the Gen 4 games, their remakes, or any other core installment in the series. Doing a quick comparison of the Hisui and Sinnoh Dexes shows us that there's a whopping 25 Pokemon that are found somewhere in the Hisui region that are completely absent from other titles. Pokemon mm. like the adorable Hisuian Growlithe and the hauntingly new evolution of Basculin, Basculegion. But why? Where'd they go? We've been in this region before. We've seen everything there is to see here. And yet, in the 140 year history between this game and Gen 4, 25 Pokemon apparently got wiped out. Unsurprisingly, the game never explicitly says what happened to all these Pokemon. Based on my findings, it's for a good reason. You see, they're shielding us from the truth. We killed them. We are responsible. Uh -huh. We're the reason those 25 Pokemon variants are gone now. We made them go extinct. So Alright, um, population collapse. The dark side of it. Hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry. Come with me, loyal theorists, as we go big lore hunting to figure out what exactly lore. happened to all these new, old Pokemon. But before we set off on adventure, we have to be equipped like a Pokemon trainer. Have you ever stopped to think about how much stuff a trainer actually needs to carry around? Rare stones, candies, antidotes, whatever the heck a TM is. And that is where our newest line of theory wear comes in. That's right, it's merch drop time. Starting with our newest and most advanced backpack, the tech wear backpack. This thing literally is the 
the backpack from the future. Heavy duty and with plenty of room for your laptop, your favorite Poke Pal, or a collection of balls. Aww. Poke balls. Eat your heart out. Yup, mm hmm. Let's think about it. Family friendly, wholesome. Thank you. Out Ash Ketchum, because this isn't just a plain old green backpack. This thing comes with loop strings and bungee cords that allow you to quickly access all your most important theorist tools. This thing mm. is loaded with function, but it's also loaded with fashion. That's actually why I wanted to lean more into the subtle coloring and branding with this one. It still shows off your theorist pride, but it's doing it in a way that can comfortably come with you to any school or professional setting. It's not gonna stand out like a sore thumb as obviously YouTuber merch. Or if you're looking for something smaller that can hold a couple of things in a simple grab-and-go style, check out the Techwear shoulder bag. It's compact and light, which makes it perfect if you live in a place where you have to do a lot of walking. True story, I've been in London for the past two months, and this bag has been a lifesaver, because it was able to oh. hold the few items that I wanted from the store, all without weighing me down or feeling like a burden to bring along. And considering it's been one of the hottest summers on record here in the city, one of the things that I was always bringing along in that bag? Water. Which is why I always kept the new Game Theory water bottle packed. This no-leak, practically unbreakable Nalgene-style bottle is built in with achievements written along the side to make it crystal clear when you've hit different hydration milestones along the way. Can you be one of the people to get the platinum trophy in hydration? Time to find out. Something else you could throw into that tech bag? Our new pack of perfectly pixelated playing cards. And to round the whole collection off, because I couldn't leave you without at least one piece of stylish clothing, we've got the tech tee. Y'all know that I love an asymmetrical design, right? So I leaned into it with a color-blocked sleeve and a tie-dye inspired pattern that washes across the front. In short, head on down to the description to catch them all. All the latest items in the merch drop before they disappear and go extinct. Kinda like- Gotta catch them all. <laughs> Pokemon? Like Wordier. Speaking of, let's start by looking at one of the first new Pokemon that we get to see in the game. Wordier, the long-awaited evolution for the Pokemon Stantler. Now, in mm. Legends Arceus, Stantlers are plentiful. You practically trip over these guys. But in Sinnoh, not so much. They can only be obtained on one specific route using the Poke Radar. And as for Wordier, they don't exist. Like, not at all. For a Stantler to become a Wordier, it needs to use the move Psy Shield Bash a total of 20 times. But Psy Shield Bash isn't a move that Stantlers can learn in games set in the future. So not only has the overall number of Stantler shrunk, but it's also lost the ability to use a move that's critical for its evolution into Wordier. That's- Which brings up the question, why? Why? It's weird right? So inevitably, I have to ask the question, why? Clearly, the game designers consciously made this decision, so what are they trying to tell us? What reason would Stantlers have to forget an entire move? Well, Wordier's <laughs> Pokedex entry actually gives us a hint. The black orbs shine. <laughs> I guess I can't use my normal Pokedex voice since this game doesn't have an electronic Pokedex. Gotta go with the old-fashioned method. The black orbs shine with an uncanny oh! light when the Pokemon is erecting invisible barriers. The fur shed from its beard retains heat well and is highly useful material for winter clothing. Let me try. <clears throat> the black orbs shine with an uncanny light when the Pokemon is erecting invisible barriers. The fur shed from its beard retains heat well and is, is, is a highly useful material for winter clothing. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not the best. Useful in cold weather, huh? Sure sounds like something that the citizens of the cold Hisui region would find pretty valuable. Once people read that Pokedex entry, it's likely they're going to be tempted to try and get their hands on Wordier to obtain that precious fur, especially as they continue expanding into areas like the icy north. So, it would seem like Wordier were hunted to extinction for their fur, while the remaining Stantlers did their best to avoid evolving, choosing to flee rather than fight, much like real-life deer are known to do. For the Stantlers, evolving just wasn't worth the added stat increase if it made it harder to survive. Do you want to get Hunter Girl? Cause that's what you get, that's how you get Hunter. Right. After generations and generations of Stantlers avoiding fights with humans, and especially avoiding the use of Psy Shield Bash out of a fear of evolving, they would eventually forget how to use the move entirely in order to help their chances of survival. No Psy Shield Bash means no evolving, means no Wordier. And they aren't the only species that was basically bullied into extinction either. Take the Hisuian Quillfish, a regional variant that's been totally wiped out from Sinnoh by the time Gen 4 rolls around. Looking at it, it's Pokedex entry, though, immediately you start to see why this guy might have been on the chopping block. It tells us that Fishers detested this troublesome Pokemon because it sprays poison from its spines, getting it everywhere. A different form of quillfish lives in other regions. Let me try. Wait, wait, let me try to pronounce it properly. Quillfish lives in. Fishers detest this troublesome Pokemon because it sprays poison from its spines, getting it everywhere. 
a different form of queer fish lives in other regions. Other regions. If you look at the Cobalt coastline, one of the main locations for Hisui and Quillfish, we see that in the intervening 140 years, this actually becomes Gen 4's Route 223, a prime fishing mm -hmm. location thanks to the Sunny Shore Market and a swimming location on the way to Victory Road. What this tells us is that fishermen, fed up with the poisonous quillfish, hunted them to extinction so the coastline could be better used for commercial and recreational purposes. They eliminated what they saw as a problematic fish, which directly leads to what we see in Sinnoh years later. And it's not like it would be hard for them to do either, considering the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex entries call the quillfish a poor swimmer. There's also a second ah. reason that fishermen might have wanted to get their hands on the quillfish, but this one isn't as directly called out. I think it's because puffer fish and it's, it's a delicacy in Japan. Food. We've talked over on Food Theory about eating Pokemon, but quillfish are likely to be a delicacy in this universe. There's a type of real-world pufferfish called Fugu. It contains a super deadly neurotoxin, just like our good old poisoned type Hisuian quillfish, and it too is a delicacy in many parts of Japan, only being mm -hmm. served by specially trained chefs who know how to prepare the meat without killing their customers. It's a skilled chef, non, uh, non nonetheless. Doing quillfish would probably work in the same way. Regardless, though, whether it was to clear a nuisance or fill the restaurants, humans were the ones that wiped these guys out from the coastlines of Hisui. Speaking of being hunted, let's look at two more examples of hunted Pokemon, Hisui and Voltorbs and Electrodes. Looking at them, it's immediately clear that these two have had some of the most dramatic changes in their design. The Kanto versions of these Pokemon are made of some sort of metal-like compound, while the Hisui and Electrodes Pokedex entry says that the body is made of a, quote, material curiously similar to apricorn wood like moon wood you can like wood W-O-O-D. Now, this is an important detail because historically, apricorns were used to make Pokeballs. In Legends Arceus, apricorns are everywhere. But in Sinnoh, there's no more of these trees to be found. So what happened? Well, by the end of Legends Arceus, because of the work that we did throughout the game, people are now looking to catch Pokemon for themselves. As a result, it's likely that they began to harvest apricorns at an alarming rate to craft their own Pokeballs. But in the rush, no one thought to do it sustainably. And suddenly, ah. there are no more apricorn trees left in the region. So, without the wood to build Pokeballs, what do you do then? You start to hunt the animal that has a body made of a very similar wood, Hisuian Voltorbs and Electrodes. Over time, to avoid going extinct, Hisuian Voltorb and Electrode may have evolved into their metal form that would prevent them from getting poached by the would-be Kurtz of the world. And this directly mirrors the animal behavior that we see in real life. Many elephants are slaughtered specifically for their tusks, right? Well, this has historically been happening so much that elephants in heavily hunted areas are now starting to evolve to have smaller tusks, or even no tusks at all. Since Yes, think about it. Those that survived, th those elephants that survived, either have shorter task or have no task at all. And since the poachers, the people that pew pew pew, only want those big task, so they will only target those big tasks. Whereas those surviving ones, they can repopulate again and the next generation and the next generation and the next generations. Those generations that survive only have small or no task at all, which is kind of sad actually, really kind of sad. And not, not to mention, those pew 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 predator, uh, uh, hunters will only hunt those large elephants. So those smaller elephants survive and they repopulate to the next generation of small elephants. And among the small elephants, the bigger ones will be pew pew away. And then the small, among, the, among those surviving ones, we will give up to even smaller one and smaller and smaller one. Think about it, I've seen footage of elephants that's like, gosh, two stories, three stories high. Dum, dum, dum. But right now, the size of those elephants that survived in the year 2022, they're only one and a half story tall, two story tall. You can't, you, you rarely find elephants that, that are surviving right now, they are three story tall. Kind of sad, actually. It's just kind of sad. Poachers are hunting them for those tusks. Elephants with no tusks have an evolutionary advantage, thereby passing that trait along. Just like a metal Voltorb and Electrode would have a survival advantage over their wood variants. But it wasn't just overhunting that was a problem in that 140 year period. It was also an overuse of the region's resources. Ursa Luna and Cleaver are two new evolutions of Ursa Ring and Scyther that we see in Legends Arceus that require the use of a specific item to evolve. Ursa Ring needs the Peat Block, and Scyther needs the Black Augurite. And while 
while Ursaring and Scyther are certainly easy to obtain in the Gen 4 games, their evolutions aren't present because neither of these items exist anymore, which we can Why? explain by looking at the differences between Hisui and Sinnoh. The peat block mm -hmm. item is based on the real-life material known as, well, peat. Basically, it's like a precursor to coal. It takes thousands of years to form, and it can be burned for fuel. Based on the cities that we see in Gen 4, it's clear that there was an increase in industrialization in the Sinnoh region. Industrialization means machines, and machines need fuel. And hey, look, here's a readily available material that's just laying here with no other discernible purpose. Might as well use it until it's gone. Black Augurite actually suffers a similar fate. The name originally led me to believe that Black Augurite is based off the mineral Augite. However, looking at the in-game sprites and description, the two don't seem to line up. Its black, glassy texture actually makes it more likely to be obsidian. Obsidian's a material that's made from the rapid cooling of lava, and it's been used mm -hmm. for centuries as a sharp material for tools. The only just arrows. Pew, pew. Active volcano that we see in the Hisui region is this one off the Cobalt Coastland, which, based on its shape, is what they call a cinder cone volcano. Cinder cone volcanoes don't tend to make obsidian. The only other place it could have come from is Mount Coronet, which the box art does seem to imply is a volcano, but it appears to have been dormant for years. Therefore, it's safe to say that black augurite is going to be in limited supply. It, along with peat, are non-renewable resources. So when humanity expanded its presence in the region and wound up using up all these items, Earth Ring and Scyther no longer had the ability to evolve. You know who else disappeared from the region because the natural environment changed? Arcanine, Avalug, and Decidui, who all have Pokedex entries that specifically mention being adapted to the colder climate and snow of the Hisui region. Hisui is an island, and islands are small. When habitats are smaller, that means that the organisms that live there need to become more specialized. For example, take the mm -hmm. famous finches studied by Charles Darwin on the Galapagos Islands. What Much respect to this legend, Charles Darwin. Mm he saw was that each finch evolved a completely unique beak shape based on the island that it lived on. This comes with the benefit of making you really well suited to your environment, but the downside is that if anything changes, then your specialized traits won't do you any good. And that's exactly what happened with these Hisui Pokemon. As humans expanded their reach into the area, as they industrialized, the climate of Hisui became warmer. This uptick in human development, the deforestation that came with it, all of it led to a shift in biodiversity of the region, meaning some of these Pokemon were no longer able to make the cut. Now, these are only a few examples of what happened to these region-specific Pokemon, but you can see the pattern, right? All these Pokemon are gone thanks to one specific factor. Humans. Humans plundering resources, humans overhunting, humans over-expanding. In the 140 years between Legends Arceus and Gen 4, humans have completely morphed the landscape of the Sinnoh region, and the game designers have clearly thought through that history. They- Yes, MatPat make a very good point. It is just not sustainable. If you just take, 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 and we're not providing for next future, for the future directions. It's a warning sign. Although it's, although it's a fictional world, it's a warning sign to us all in the real world that we need to take things seriously. We need to think this true about what we are doing right now didn't just insert designs and evolutions into this world arbitrarily. The whole thing was thoughtful, intentional. It was told to us through hints in the Pokedex. In the end, we get ourselves a game that has a really strong environmental message if we just bother to piece together the breadcrumbs that they left behind for us. And keep it sustainable for the next generation. Us. Except there's still one piece that I haven't connected. During the game, we learned that the people of Hisui are afraid of Pokemon. Some even worship them. The little village that you start off in isn't able to expand more because they're afraid to face the monsters that lurk out in the wilderness. But someone yeah. changes that, and in so doing, signs Hisui's death warrant. That person is you. At the start of the game, your character is called back in time by the god Pokemon Arceus. When you land, you're immediately tasked with catching Pokemon, something that other people are afraid to do. But you, you know better. You come from the future, so you persist. You teach people that Pokemon can be your friends, that they can be used to help with chores. You can even collect them and use them for competitive sports. Without this fear of Pokemon, the human race is now able to expand throughout Hisui. Thanks to you, they're no longer afraid to hunt word here for their fur, to exterminate pests like the quillfish, or to use up the land's natural resources. If you had decided to not be a hero, to not save the day, the region would have remained too inhospitable for civilization to truly grow. And humans 
humans would have chosen to avoid it entirely. Kinda makes you wonder if that god Pokemon who sent us back in time was so benevolent after all. But hey, here's your last reminder to head on down to the description to get your hands on the latest line of Theorist merch. Whether you're looking to head out on adventures for the summer or just wanting to get yourself ready for school this fall, this latest drop is perfect for you. The backpack is especially great for anyone in need of some new swag for the upcoming school year. It's got the signature game theory style, but in a way that isn't too bright or loud, so you'll be able to fit in with everyone else while still rocking that theorist pride. So head on over to the merch store or click the link down in the description to pick up a water bottle, a bag, or some playing cards before they disappear forever. Just like the Pokemon of Hisui. And as always, oh! remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And hey, if you like this dark Pokemon theory, there's plenty more where that came from. It's not just Hisui and Pokemon that are doomed. Shiny Pokemon aren't much better off. You can check out that theory by clicking right here. Or you can find out what level Ash's Pikachu is by watching the video on your right. Yep, I really did the math. While you're at it, throw a Pokeball over at the subscribe button so whenever we do more theories, you'll be the first to catch them. Oh, I'm gonna catch them all. Let me see the meme at the back first. Thanks for we And as always, remember, it's all so just a- just Look at me, look at me, I'm a Toga star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Normally, it, normally the Pokemons lurk in the tall grass in the other games, but in this game, the player lurk in the tall grass. Hmm. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. This video has been very informative, very knowledgeable, and very wisdom filled. Um, thank you so much, my pet and the team behind this video. You guys make a very important point that humans, you, me, everybody, we need to think about the future for the next generations, keep things sustainable, at the very least, keep it sustainable. Yeah, we, we, we can take, 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 but remember to give it back, so that the next year, 10 years later, 100 years later, 1000 years later, generations after generations later, we can think about it far ahead in the long future, in the, in the far future, why am I saying long future, in the far future. Well. I hope that you learned something new from this video and I hope that it has been quite inspirational to you to learn from it. Especially about the population growth. Uh, the population collapse. It's the population collapse of Pokemons. But what about human beings? We all know that Elon Musk has mentioned it multiple different times. Population collapse. Well I'll leave it at that. Let's do our outro. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share of us. Down below, down below. Don't forget to follow my channel and hope to see you in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you.